Welcome to Toffee TV. It is the Everton News Daily. It is the 31st of May, which means in just a few hours, we will find out whether the 777 takeover deal is dead in the water. The contract is uh, exclusivity contract is set to expire at 12 o'clock New York time, uh, 12 a.m. So, uh, 5 a.m. in the morning here in the UK. So by then, I imagine it will be all done and dusted. There doesn't seem to be any indication that will be extended. And obviously, everyone's aware of the issues Triple Seven have had in the last couple of weeks, where it really has felt like the Triple uh, Seven Empire has has fallen down. The house of cards has fallen down. Uh, all of the clubs they own are potentially now up for sale, or certainly seems like they're up for sale. Uh, Genoa are really, really struggling with the amount of debt that they've been placed under. And they were obviously seen as a team that um, were one of the one of the uh, things to look at, one of the positive things to look at. But that looks like, it looks like really the, the house cards really has fallen down. I don't think anyone really is expecting any kind of extension. Um, obviously, what that means is there's no income coming in from 777, who have obviously been given the club money since, uh, since September. Um, now, no one really knows if and when Everton will have to pay that back. Um, obviously, at the moment, that's not really the issue. Obviously, the issue for Evertonians is who will fundamentally pay those bills that Triple Seven have been paying. Well, of course, you'd all, we'd all expect um, Farad Mashiri, the owner of the football club, to pay those bills because he is the owner of the football club at the end of the day. It'll be very interesting to see what does happen in the next few days, whether Farad Mashiri, um, you know, makes some kind of statement to Evertonians, whether he puts a proper board in place, a, a CEO that's going to be there, whether he, whether he you know, he uh, comes out and says, you know, I'm, I'm going to run this place properly. But certainly what it does open the door is to, is for other investors or the buyers to come in to ever now that exclusivity period is on over and obviously this time last week we found out about john texter obviously the crystal palace shareholder obviously um speaking and saying that he wanted to come to the club if you want more on that by the way i've done a interview with crystal palace uh blogger hltco who uh, give us a bit of insight on who john texter is and his role at crystal palace uh, make sure you check that out um yeah, so it, it opens the doors. It has been said for, uh, for the whole period, 777 have been trying to buy the club, that there were people waiting in the wings. And the same people who brought us the news that 777 are potentially, or were potentially um, not in a position to buy the club, have also been saying all, all the way through that there were potential buyers behind the scenes. So now is the time for those people to step up and step forward. And uh, see, you know, because the process of buying into the club, we know is a long, can be a long drawn out thing. Hopefully it won't be as bad as the, the triple seven one, but certainly it seems like 12 weeks is the minimum to pass uh, all the tests required. So, um, of course, MSP are, are there. They have pumped money into the club as a loan. Um it is believed that there has been Everton have been given or Farhad Mister has been given an extension on the loan of one hundred and fifty eight million pounds. Um, now there is talk that they could convert that loan into equity and and take maybe over the running of the club on a day to day with the idea of getting it into a situ into a place where it becomes a, a better sellable asset for them. They would obviously make their money back by being owners or part owners of the football club um but it just feels like as we get closer to the stadium being completed and obviously no money needing to go into that but there is still money obviously needing to go into it but the closer we get to actually it open and when it is fully built and ready to go obviously then we won't need to spend any more money and it has been it has been such a drain on Farad Mashiri and and obviously getting uh loans in to cover that as well so um that extension has um, been granted. No idea till when or what that'll mean for MSP, but we'll wait and see. But obviously, it is the major talking point, and Evan have been quite bullish this week, as we've said all week about Jared Branthwaite, um, about you know they said Dominic Carvalho's extension uh, contract offer. Sorry, has been put on the table. That is uh, apparently that that contract has been on the table for a while, 
but due to the ongoing situation at Everton, uh, it would seem that Dominic Calvert-Lewin is in no real rush to sign that at the moment because no one quite knows what the situation is going to be with the club in the future. So that's very much still on uh, on the table. And Everton are um, really hoping to sell um, Onana, Michael Keane, uh, Holgate, and Mope in you know in the short term to make up. The, as much of the summer budget as they possibly can, rather than sell the likes of Jared Branthwaite or Dominic Calvin Lewin or Jordan Pickford, who's been muted as well. I mean, Onana, Pickford, and Branthwaite, Dominic Calvin Lewin have been the four players that everyone has mentioned about bringing money into the football club. Um, I think, sort of, I think Pickford's off the table. I don't think really he wants to move. I don't think there's that many takers for him anyway. Onana is the obvious one. I think most Evertonians believe he'll go, and I think. Well, we've seen that the manager has, has played plenty of games without him. Um, I think Onan would be the natural one. I think he's ready to move on in his career as well and try his hand um, maybe in, at a club that are in Europe. And he's mentioned this week as well, he hopes that the uh, Euros is the tournament that helps him push him on to bigger and better things, which is, which is fine, absolutely fine. And obviously, Keane, Holgate, Mopai our natural wastage there players that if we can get I mean if we could get in the region of 30 million for those three players we'll have done really really well and obviously got them their wages off the books as well which is a massive thing any player who doesn't play if we can get their wages off the books that would be um, a fantastic achievement and obviously with the wages of Andre Gomez as well and Dan Juma gone this summer um, that would be massive as well so there's so many things up in the air at the moment and uh, obviously tomorrow we will we will know we will all sort of know in the morning and I imagine that 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 triple seven are fully out I think everyone believes it is done but obviously until it's done and it's actually done then we don't really know um well and we'll have to wait and see uh, one player that looks like he is destined to come back to Evan is Jack Harrison uh, he's apparently very keen to come back to the club uh, it, there is a clause in his contract very much like there was the season just gone that if Leeds um, aren't in the Premier League that he can go on loan and obviously him being back at Everton would just seem like a the, the wisest thing the simplest thing he could do as well so uh, it is it is that looks like one that um, could be done as early as possible as Evan try and get those kind of deals done as fast as possible get the, the likes of the loans over the line and uh, we can get Jack Harrison in and that's one less thing to sort of worry about um, and one less player that we have to pay anything for as well which I think is the really important thing so uh, there you go we as I said we'll be we'll find out um, tomorrow what the situation with triple seven is as I said I'm not sure Evan are going to put some big statements out or Farad Mishé is not going to put a big statement out but at least we'll um We'll know it's past, and I imagine the people who are really in the know will will know the situation, and and um, will confirm to us that it is all over on the triple seven front. There you go. Right, we'll be back on Monday with all the latest news and as it, and all the fallout as well of of what the situation is uh, possibly on this as well. So. Make sure to give this video a like, subscribe if you haven't already. If you want more great videos, join us over on Toffee TV Premier. The link is in the description. QR codes come up on the screen now. Thanks for watching.